All right, let's go ahead and let's jump into some incursions chat here. I'm going to pull this up for a second here. So Kana Dajal of server 187 was kind enough to post these. These are on DJ's uh, Discord uh, in his chat room. He posted these screenshots around 1230 today. So we're going to try and large them up. Uh, you can see the reward for winning is 2,000 coins plus two Una shards. So this doesn't look like it, too much was changed. The amount of coins you get for winning might have been increased slightly. Uh, I don't know what else is in here with the bonus awards. Probably some relay station tokens as well. The scoring was changed slightly. So now if you're dealing hull damage, it used to be you got three times the points for doing it as the invader and only one times points for being the defender. This has been flattened out. It's just a straight one-to-one -one now. So if whether you're attacking or defending, you're doing hull damage to your opponent, it's a straight one-for-one -one exchange. Because that was always a problem too. It's like, well, even though the invader... Like, you might be killing the invader's ships and winning the fights. But because of the way the server scoring was imbalanced, they would end up getting more points than you. And that didn't make any sense. Like, you're winning the fight but losing the war. As for the rating, you can see that Parsteel, Tritanium, and Dilithium were also flattened out to be one point each. I think it used to be one point for Parsteel, three points for Tritanium, and five for Dilithium. Um... Or something like that, or maybe it was one, two, three, and then it was doubled, like if you were the invader or something like that. But I forget offhand, but it was definitely, it wasn't an, uh, an even score. They progressively were worth more points. And they've also added points, if there's anybody crazy enough to be actually be out mining during an incursion event, you can get additional points for OPC hunting, Latinum concentrated, G3, G4, and G5 materials, so it's somehow somebody didn't A, pull their own miner, and B, the people on their server didn't kill them, because I know most servers do server sweeps. Like an hour before the incursion starts, it's like, pull all your miners back, and everybody else just goes through, and it's just there is no ROE, kill any ship you see, because you don't want the opponents coming through and getting points for this stuff, so... So the, this change to the scoring whoops, definitely seems like a win so far. And then even as the defender, you can see the points are even. So it's all balanced out. Hi, Liam. Welcome to the channel. Thank you very much for the follow. And a stretch. Okay, we'll give a quick stretch. So the, the, the scoring metric for the incursion battle itself drastically overhauled seems to be a big improvement so we're going to take that as a win all right so we have our invader solo leaderboard which is dealing hull damage this only works if you are dealing damage to your opponent people from the opposing server and you can't do it against people on your own server according to the tooltip note right there this is giving out strike t uh, i'm sorry regular strange new world una shards as well as syndicate xp top three also get a frame Then we have our Champion S X SLB. This is our cross-server leaderboard, which is giving out Una shards and the subspace relay communicators. So th this event looks the same, and this is just counting wins. Win as an invader, win as a defender. This is probably still going to be, you know, you're finding some little empty base, and you're just farming it over and over and over again. You're just hitting it. You're not stealing any resources from it. That's probably what's going to be going to win this still. I don't know that they have a way to really fix that loop. So that's probably going to be your best bet still to score for this particular event is to just farm empty bases that nobody cares about. 
where's the defender version of the damage event? Well, that's a good question. I don't think we have one of those. Unless, because this, maybe because this player can't see it because he was the invader. So if his server was the invading server, maybe he only got this particular event. And if he was on the defending server, maybe he would have got the opposite event. Because there is a slight difference now. You're doing all 24 hours. One server is the invader. One server is the defender. They should have slightly different events based on whatever your role is in the fight. Hey, Cap Jesse. Welcome on in. So there's the champion SLB. Now we've got this all-out attack. This is an SMS event that's giving out a thousand coins as well as some other resources. You're getting points. Now this is going to be based on your ops level. You're going to have a targeted system where you're going to have to go to... It, the fighting will all take place on one server. So if you're the attacker, it's going to be on their server. If you're the defender, it's going to be on your server. There'll be a particular system. There'll be particular ships that will score. They will all be based on what your ops level is. So if your ops 35, it's not going to be these ships, and it's not going to be this system. It's going to be a different system for you. And it's going to be, you know, augers and D3s and D4s and Saladins and stuff like that scoring for, for those types of events. Um, but because this player was in the 40s, now he's getting, you're seeing the 42s, the 46s, and even the 50s are all counting points for that. I'd be very curious to see what mine looks like at in the 50s. Hopefully I still get a little bit of leeway and maybe I can at least use like my Pylum or my Tribune. Because if it's like, all right, you're in the 50s now, use all these ships. And it's like, yeah, I haven't built any of those yet. So hopefully there's at least a little bit of wiggle room there. I will attack you with my Franklin A. <laughs> I don't know why it's on there, but if you want to use it, I guess you could. And then as you can see here, based on whatever ship you kill, it's the type of ship that you kill, you get a certain number of points. Obviously, the bigger ships are harder to kill. They're worth more points. He's a level 49 player, I think. So he had about 11 million points. If he could kill three or four Tribunes, he'd be done. Otherwise, he's basically trying to kill like seven or eight Pylums or some combination of, you know, uh, 10 or 11, 11 or 12 rather, you know, Valdors or Katingas to finish this up. If you lose, again, based on what you die against, you also get, it's about half the points, I think, if I'm, eh, I did that wrong again. I keep thinking like this is my screen, but I'm actually just looking at, at still shots. So yeah, it's half the points. So if you, if you're the winner, you get all the points. If you lose the fight, you still get half the points. So it still is actually might actually be worth it to try to punch up. Because if you try to fight a Tribune and you lose, you get nearly 1.5 million points, which would be the same as beating a Coronar or a Pylum. So, I mean, obviously, if you can find these and kill them, great. But if you're like, oh, I'm about to die, I'm running out of hell, hull health, I might as well just go die to one of these. Now, curiously enough, because it says lose to this ship worth these amount of points, somebody mentioned like, oh, you're going to have to do like Rialto stuff like that. This might still score that way. Lose to an Enterprise A Hecta Tribune, get 1.5 million points. If you sent your discovery into them and just crashed it into them, quick repaired it, warped it right back out, crashed it into them again, you might get 1.5 million points per loss and have very little repair cost for doing it. It's going to suck for them because they're going to get 124,000 points for beating your discovery while you're getting 1.5 million points for blowing up to their Tribune. But 
that's a possible strategy. Frankie Bone says there's no requirement on what ship you use. You could slam a Rialta into a Tribune ten times and finish the event if you can get it there. Yes, that would also work. I'm using the Discovery as an example because at least that ship has the warp range to jump in and out of places, so it can probably get where you need it to. But you're right. I mean, if you could get a Rialta, a Fortunate, an Envoy, or whatever out there, and just keep summoning them in and then slamming them into stuff, you could do that too. Spend the 700, 800, whatever disco juice and keep summoning your Rialta over and over again and just smash it into them 10 times and hey, my event's over. That could work too. So. Okay. So those are those events so far. This is an ALB event for completing researches. Each research that's completed by somebody in your alliance is worth 1,500 points. Alliance rankings were giving out exo linear comp chips thingies, as well as a very small amount of Strange New Worlds La'an shards. Very small amount. That was it for the first set of photos. We have another post here with a few more events. This is an Alliance leaderboard event for spending ship XP, which somebody was talking about earlier. This gives out the Cardassian badges used for that research in the star base tree, as well as a small amount of Dr. Bashir shards. Uh huh. Then you also have the Event Completionist Alliance leaderboard. So for completing SMS events, you score for that. Where you finish in other incursion leaderboard events will also score for this. The XSLB and the SLB events. So you do your SMSs, you score points. Where you end up ranking in the cross-server leaderboards and regular leaderboards will also earn you additional points for your alliance and you will get a little amount of trait XP and a handful not even a handful a small pittance of John Harrison shards too which again the amounts I like the events I like the rewards the amounts just seem low I get it it is for everybody in the entire alliance but you know winning this event basically means you won all the other events too or your people in your alliance did really well in all the other events and it's like what do we get for it we get eight john harrison shards it's not really doing a whole lot it's not really moving the needle this is the ship xp one yep 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 we looked at those I guess that's it for those. Okay. Again, thank you to Kana Dajal for posting all of these photos. We can also take a quick look at the event store. So you still have the consumables, and then you have the actual other things as well. These are the different tokens that you spend your incursion type 1 currency on, doing more PvP damage, Stella damage, Franklin damage, increasing impulse and warp speed boosts for an hour, mining faster, some of this stuff, you know, uh, not really all that great or useful because you're not really mining during an incursion event. And anybody who thinks that you are clearly has never played the game during an incursion event. I feel like there was quite a bit of surprise when certain people, you know, in charge of the game heard that servers actually organize sweeps of their servers before incursion launches. What? You guys go around and you kill all... Yes, we go around and we kill all of our own people. So that way there's nobody out mining when the incursion event starts. There's nobody floating in, you know, swarm space or Borg space who just left a ship out there. None of that is happening. There are no easy points 
for the other server to get and steal points from. None of that exists. So this kind of stuff seems a little out of touch, but it was there and they just left it. So TC likes the concept, not the payout so far. It's good mechanics. I like what the mechanics that they're trying to do and that's a good change. But yes, the payouts don't seem sufficient enough for the actual event there. So, All right. When you go into the actual store, we've got a couple. We've got a new hailing frequency. You've got a couple of frames and avatars and things in here as well, as well as some officer poles. And fleet commanders are also in here. So you can buy shards for the fleet commanders that you don't have, as well as blueprints for the Defiant and the Titan are now available in the Incursion store. That's what we're going through right now, Commander Reigns. You can also get rare Armada directives, which is uh, excessively costed. And the Strike Team, Una's still here. Battleship Strike Team is also still here. No Explorer Strike Team, no Interceptor Strike Team. This is still the same people that were here before. Uh, Epic Officers are 400 apiece. Rare Officers are 200 apiece in terms of coins and costs. So, Epic Officers, 400 coins. This Pocket Watch uses a different currency. This is what you get. One of the rewards for, like, winning the incursion gives you these additional little trophy things. So, if you win a couple of them, then you can get a Pocket Watch. Woo! Yay! And then we have the Fleet Commander Shards as well. Those are 150 apiece. It looks like... You know, so far it looks like if you complete the SMS, you get a thousand coins. If your server wins the SM, you know, the whole incursion event, you get a two thousand coin bonus. So you're either getting one thousand coins or three thousand coins. Aloha to you too, Doctor Iron Chef. Um, so, I mean, if you're talking realistically, if you win the incursion, you get 3,000 coins. means you can buy 20 Locutus shards. Assuming you're not sitting on any from previous events. Or bye weeks or other trophies or things like that. So if you, if you spend them all, you would get 20 Locutus shards. And you'd have to win, if you won 7 months, you'd get... 140 shards, and you'd still be 10 short. So realistically, timeline-wise, the way the scoring is paying out right now, this is 8 to 12 months in order to source one fleet commander for free, and that's the only thing you're investing in. That's terrible. That is terrible. Why is it called Fleet Commander Kirk? Well, that's a different problem. They, but they're both named Fleet Commander Kirk. Like, Kirk is there, Spock is there, Locutus is there, Seven of Nine is there. All four of them are there. Um, but Kirk's name shows up twice, even though one of them is Locutus Shards. If you lose and you only get a thousand... What's that? Let's do the quick math. So... 150 is 150 shards, right? So 22,500 to unlock a fleet commander. Divide it by 1,000. 22 and a half months. So if you just did the, or if you're, if you complete your SMS and you get your 1,000 coins and your server loses every single thing, it would take you nearly two years to source one fleet commander for free. That's not good. 
That is not good at all. That's assuming, of course, that those options will even still be there for two years from now. Because how much would that suck if you're over here, you're investing your currency into Locutus, you're like 50 shards, 60 shards, and then they're like, hey guys, we're going to rotate our prize pool, and now he's not available anymore. That's a real possibility. Oh, we're going to switch some things around. We're going to take some things out, put some newer content in our incursion store because it's been six months since we started this and those prizes are getting stale. You hope that's not the case, but it legit could be, right? So this is pretty terrible, so. Olympus says, you think they'd give us like six or 700,000 currency given this is like an event store and only comes around every five or six months? Yeah. Frankie says, I'd recommend saving all your currency and never actually buying anything until you have enough to buy the thing that you want. That might be what you have to do. That might be the best strategy, right? Unless it's something you know you have another sourcing path for. Like if you're trying to get some Defiant Blueprints or you're trying to get Mantis Blueprints or... Uh, Titan blueprints, right? Because there is other sourcing for those elsewhere in the game. You know, the Mantis will probably be in the next event store, hopefully, if you don't have it. Uh, Defiant and Titan are in their respective faction pulls. So if you wanted to spend some currency on those to speed those up, you at least know there's another path for those. Uh, if you're trying, if you have Kirk and you're trying to get Spock or vice versa, you know you're going to get some shards randomly during your daily pulls. To try and unlock the other fleet commander of the free two, that you whichever one you chose. But yeah, if you're if you're cur curious about getting Locutus or Seven of Nine, your best bet is really going to be to just sit on the coins and save up the currency until you have all twenty two thousand five hundred that you need and can just buy the whole thing, which also appears like it's going to require you to click the freaking button one hundred and fifty times, which is also very annoying. But you know, I'd be asking for too much if I wanted them to have multi-chest pull options, so. The pull rate on the dailies is redonkulous. It is pretty bad. We'll look at that in a little bit. I feel like I'm somewhere in the 80s now, I think, on, on Spock. I've got about, what, 85 shards or so of him. And we're, you know, almost, what, six months into this fleet commander thing, so... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely slow, and it's going to take a while to get them, but they at least do show up occasionally. So if you were to buy some more from this event store and still not have enough to unlock him, it's not like you'd be completely wasting that currency. Denver's at 85 out of 150. So yeah, I figure some people are probably in that 75, 85 range after six months now uh cisco epic officers right and i feel like i don't know if we have costs posted if anybody posted pictures of the ship blueprints i guess i don't see those in here i don't see any screenshots of those uh rev may have had them in his video that he posted. Let's go take a quick peek. We'll see if I can do this. I'm going to try and just look that up real fast. Uh, looks like the ship blueprints were all the same cost. They were a hundred a piece. So if you lose the event, you could get 10 blueprints. Yeah, if you lose the event... You could get 10 blueprints. If you win the event, you could buy 30 blueprints. Uh, other thing that I also just saw from Rev's video that was not in the photos that were posted, uh, Odo is also available as an Epic Officer. So you've got Cisco and Odo available for 
for pull in that event. So if you're a couple of Odo shards short of unlocking him or tearing him up or something, you know, again, he's 400 apiece. If you're if you lose the incursion and you only get a thousand coins, that's two shards. It's not really doing a whole lot, so. Ad came on as he was stating the cost of the blueprints. And Aaron, you're the one who asked the question earlier. It's it's one hundred each. One hundred. Frankie was correct. So, <laughs> just in case you still can't see me talking, there's the answer. Okay. Before I move on and forget about my event, I am just going to do a quick recruit. Pull here. Let's open up one of those. just do those real fast so you know normally you're looking at your defiant blueprints in here you're looking at your ex board blueprints for your titan out of here this could be an opportunity to speed this process up and source it a lot faster if that's how you want to spend your currency you also do have officers you've got the fleet commanders like we just said uh, let's go look fleet commanders where am I at on Spock? I have 97 out of 150. So if we won, I could get 20. <laughs> still not gonna get, still not gonna get there all the way. So, uh, but I'm actually slightly ahead of the game, I think. But yeah, so those are all of the different events that we have for the incursion today, tomorrow, you know, today in APAC, uh, Friday in the US, Saturday in the EU. Hopefully things run at least fairly smoothly so that way we can take what they've, changes they've put in and then build off of it. If things don't run smoothly, then they have to fix those problems and that's what they're going to spend their time doing instead of finding ways to improve the events and improve the payouts and things like that so hopefully the actual events just work the way they're supposed to and then we can move on from there and talk about hey you know this is great these events work but i'm not waiting you know 22 and a half months <laughs> to get all of the currency that I need for one fleet commander. Like, that's ridiculous. So, I'll go back and catch up on some chat here, make sure I didn't miss anything. Have they officially said incursions will be monthly going forward? They haven't officially said that. That's always been the plan. It's been to have incursions every month, and that's what they were trying to do for a while until they broke it, and they had to take it all down. If... Uh, things go smoothly, it's expected that that would go back to that monthly schedule. I don't know that they would do it more than once a month where, like, okay, these payouts would make sense if it was, like, a weekly event, right? If it was, like, Apex, if it was, like, Incursion Tuesday and every Tuesday was an Incursion event. <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Incursion Fridays, that's it. That's a new thing. Every server in the world has incursions every Friday. Okay, maybe that scoring makes sense. I don't think the player base would be very happy with having weekly incursions or even bi-weekly incursions. I think they feel like once a month is more than enough for most people. So... Hey, Brain Soup. Welcome on in. 3M hopes that wishes that Damar was in there because he only needs two shards. He obviously 
the Interceptor Strike Team and the Explorer Strike Team missing from that event. Maybe they'll be in future ones. Maybe they just wanted to get this up and running with existing sourcing for now. The drips you get probably take that long. Mm. Invader versus Defender is a smart move. Should reduce server stress compared to players switching back and forth multiple times. That's what we hope, Finny, is that most people will just, you know, overload one particular server, which will probably have a lot of lag, and then you'll move to the other server to get away from it. Um, you know, there will be people, even if you're the defender and you're supposed to be killing everyone who's coming to your server, there are going to be people who are still going to jump to the other server to go looking for unshielded bases to try and steal resources. Let's not kid ourselves about that, where everybody's just going to stay on the one server. No. People are going to go to the other side, and they're going to go try and steal resources. Um, and it seems like that aspect of the incursion is still scoring no matter which server you're on. So if you're supposed to be the defender and you're like, well, this is kind of boring, let's go see who's on the other server who I can catch sleeping, it sounded like from what I was reading today that even though I'm supposed to be the defender on my own server, if I go to the other one and steal resources from the other bases, I'm still going to get points for that to help my team win. It won't help your SMS events and things like that. You won't get the points necessarily for doing some of that stuff. But for the overall incursion leaderboard, it's still just going to count as resources rated. And you should still get points for that. So, Once a month is too much, do it twice a year. Well, then it's going to be 12 years to get uh, anything of... of point value so three M says it's only the SMS you need to be in one place SLBs are anywhere the SLBs do say invader defender though but if they forgot to put the trigger in on which server is considered the defenders so if it's you know server one versus server two and they're supposed to be ow I sprained my wrist today I can't turn my hand over like that uh, if it's supposed to be one versus two and this is supposed to be the attacker and this is supposed to be the defender but they didn't actually code them with those labels so really attacker is just you're not on your own server well that's a design flaw and that is going to kind of defeat the purpose of a lot of these events and i did hear some people saying stuff about that and uh 3m is saying that as well in the chat too so It's certainly going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And maybe there is still some, uh, we'll call it, constructive feedback that we, we can provide them that they can then readjust and make additional adjustments for before the next go-round. One SLB is on one server, the other SLB is on the other. Is that how we were reading that? Go back through here and actually go back to the photos. Uh, where are we at? If this one only deals damage as the invader, then you would have to go to the other server to score for it. I would hope, I guess this is probably asking too much, and this is probably asking, you know, that they actually sat down and thought about this or talked to anybody who actually plays the game in some type of, like, play testing, you know, brain chat, that if your server was supposed to be the defending server, that you would get a different event that would say deal damage as a defender. I'm going to guess, based on what I'm reading in the chat right now, that they didn't do that, and they're just giving everybody the same event. So the only option you have... To score for this is to go to the other server to complete it. <sighs> and that would be sad if that's the case. We hope that's not the case, but I guess we will find out later how that goes.
because none of these have any type of attacker defender metrics it's just score these points so <sighs> something to look forward to right Doug says there is a defender event for the defenders based on Rev's screenshot. Okay. So that would be good. And hopefully then that means that they actually did put a little bit of forethought and planning into figuring all this stuff out. So hopefully that's the case there. Just Q, thank you very much for the 100 bits. And welcome on in. Pew pew to you too. So that's good then. Hopefully that means that they got that right. So Yeah, I mean this could certainly be some baby steps there for sure. I'm sure lag is still going to be a bit of an issue for sure. Um, other people are pointing out that if incursions happened more than once a month, uh, people would be broke in uh, in Tritanium because of all the ship repairing. So they would have to have additional events to source Tritanium then for people, which also makes sense. So Ace, thank you also very much for the 100 bits. Uh-oh, there's the alert. We're getting close to a hype train. Ooh. Ace is not betting on whether the incursion will work. Okay, all right. TC, thank you for the hydrate. We'll take a quick pause for that. <laughs> 